Since our last edition of Science Geeks, I've decided to create my own geek mutation mutant ecological system, just to see how the animals behave. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's edition of... <laughs> My new world is a strange one, a land where the laws of nature rule. The creatures themselves are hybrid beasts, half geek, half animal, or even half vegetable in some cases. These genetically engineered marvels roam the land, interacting with each other, often fatally. But one must remember that this is also a land where the half-human mutant creatures can be seen engaging not just in violence, but also in elaborate acts of courtship. It is a land where some of my mutant geeks are predators, while others are purely prey, and in some cases, some of these creatures can be both. As a physicist, I don't know much about animals. Why should I? But I was determined to find out about the world that I had created. Unable to find a suitably qualified scientist, I had no alternative but to speak to a biologist. Hello, Miss Stressing. Hello, and good evening. Miss Stressing, it's a mad and crazy world out there, my creatures. How can we even begin to describe it? Well, one way we can make sense of what is happening in a particular habitat is to use food chains. Sorry, what did you say? I was talking about food chains. Oh, yes. Food chains, how can they help us? of organisms in a feeding relationship forms a food chain. Food chains show the transfer of energy between organisms. Energy enters the food chain as light from the sun. This light energy is absorbed by a plant through the fascinating process of photosynthesis. Plants are the producer of an ecosystem and are always at the bottom of the food chain. There are three types of consumers involved in food chains and they are herbivores, they eat plants, Carnivores eat other animals. Omnivores, who eat both plants and animals, and they're not as fussy. Okay, I get it. So, an example of the food chain in my mutant world could start with the plant-like trees. They're the producers, yeah? Being eaten by the rab geeks, which are the primary consumers, and then they get eaten by the zombie geeks, who are the secondary consumers. So in other words, our food chain would look like this. Notice the arrows on the food chain show the direction in which the energy flows through the creatures. So it goes from the tree into the rub geek into the zombie geek. Okay, that's fairly simple, but surely a complex environment like I've created can't be described so simply. Well, it helps us to build up part of the bigger picture. Yes, but what about if it's something really crazy and mad like that, which is going on over there? Oh, my God. 
Well, in this case, we have several food chains occurring in the same habitat. Whatever! In order to model this, we need to make a food web. Please tell me more! Food webs exist when one producer or consumer can be eaten by more than one consumer. They are essentially lots of food chains connected to one another. Hold on, biology lady! I think I can make a food web for my world! In my genetically engineered land, it's not just the rab geeks that eat the trees, but also a genetically altered species of pink spider. And the zombie geeks don't just limit themselves to rab geeks either, they too will eat the pink spiders. As for the rab geeks, it's even worse. They are eaten by the giant insect nature creatures, are also eaten by the zombie geeks, and at the top of the food chain, they're also eaten by the giant killer worms, who incidentally eat the zombie geeks and the rab geeks. Oh yeah, and I forgot to mention that the giant insects eat the zombie geeks as well. Got it? Probably not. But if I put all this information into a food web, like this, it makes it all much clearer. For example, what types of creatures does the giant insect eat? Well, looking at the diagram, I can see immediately it eats rub geeks and zombie geeks. Oh, and don't forget, the arrows show the direction that the energy flows through the food web. Time for an experiment. So, tell me, Miss Dressing, what would happen if we were to remove one of these animals from the food chain? Well, that's an interesting question. Let's find out. Let's. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ha ha ha, you will laugh. Miss Dressing and I decided to use industrial strength killer to remove all the rab geeks from this ecosystem in order to see what effect it would have on the other organisms. Well, that seems to have done the trick. Now let's see what happens. Yes, what do you think will happen? Press pause and have a discussion. Or simply don't bother. Here's the answer anyway. The different species in a food chain or food web are interdependent, which means they depend on each other. If the population of a species in the food chain declines or is completely removed, then this could have a devastating effect on the rest of the food chain. If the population of rabbits is removed, then the carnivore geeks will starve as they have nothing to eat. As a result, the population of the carnivore geeks will decline rapidly. The plant geeks, however, will thrive as they have nothing feeding on them, so they can continue growing and reproducing so long as nothing else begins to feed on them. And nothing else did feed on them, as the lovely zombie geeks had eaten all the spiders before they starved to death. <laughs> there were treaks galore! Isn't it amazing how removing something from an ecosystem can affect the food chain? Yes, I wonder if there's any parallels in the real world. Yes, why don't we have a really big debate about that? Let's not bother. Yeah. <laughs> Good to the summary. So remember, food chains show the transfer of energy between organisms. Energy always enters the food chain as light in the plant, which is the producer. And food webs are lots of food chains connected together to show all the feeding relationships in a particular habitat. So, there you have it. Another one of my horrible experiments is completed, and all those nasty geek animals are dead. So, until next time, I will return with my normal geeks. It's goodbye from me, and it's goodbye from 